Okay, here's something a little bit different from me. Usually we get videos about engines, cars, stuff like that. But today we've got something a little bit different. So we're opening it up, we'll see what's inside. Some people probably guess what it's going to be. It's a little old electric record player built by a company called Chini. So it says on the front, uh, made in England. I have no idea how old it is, but I'm going to guess it's probably somewhere around the 50s, 60s. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Everything stands by it being pretty old. We've got the old two-wire cord here with just a tiny little bit of insulation on it and also what looks to be like a Bakelite plug. Yes, all rather old stuff. Anyway, this record's been around for quite a while in this house. Just plug her in. Um, I've listened to it a couple of times actually, and I just thought it would be cool to get it out so I clear the space on the table in my room. Next to a few old lava lamps. Got a couple more up there as well. So very much into the old retro stuff. So we'll give this we'll give this a good listen. See see what it's like. Uh, I've listened to it before. I've had it going quite a few times actually. Listening to some old records. But I was sitting here thinking, how can we possibly tie this in to the sort of theme of the actual YouTube channel? Because obviously this has got nothing to do with engines at all. But I was looking at the uh, collection of old records down here. Mostly uh, 45s, a couple of big 33s. Obviously, that refers to the speed of which they run at. You can change that by selecting here on the record player. So, I was thinking, how could we possibly tie this in with engines? And then I found this record. It's called Nail That Noise. <laughs> and um, it's actually a record that goes through couple of engine sounds so uh, the new car owner in your 1960s 1950s can determine when his car is about to go bang <laughs> and when he needs to get it to a garage uh, so that goes through everything from the big end knock to squeaky fan belts just identifying what that noise is so yeah we'll give that a play I think that could be quite interesting and uh, ties in nicely with the old record player itself works perfectly fine just got your standard switch here which also controls the volume uh, I'm not sure if it's old enough to have vacuum tubes or valves as they're sometimes called in the back I haven't really looked around the back there is a small grate where obviously the speaker is and you can see some other bits of the stuff in there so we might take a look at the back in a little while and see if we can see any light from tubes because you always get a small light when a tube is turned on anyway let's uh, see if we can get this record going so we need to select the speed here at 33 so hopefully that should now be selected we'll soon find out because if it's wrong everything could be incredibly loud and squeaky uh, another thing about this old record, it's not your usual type of, you know, these big old records here that you cannot bend, and if you bend them, they shatter. This is actually just well, plastic, really. Strange. It's got a couple of marks in it. It's probably going to make a little bit of it a bit jumpy, but we'll see if it go. So try and get it as flat as we can on the old turntable there. Start her up. Uh, the only thing actually really that needs attention on this is the uh, speaker. The volume control is a little bit dodgy. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just got a single speaker. Most of these records, surprisingly enough, are stereo. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is just an old mono set. But anyway, we'll see if we can get the sound.
Here's a song of the noises you haven't spoken from your car. There are other noises that can spell trouble, but it's just irritating, or that can be expensive. How can we tell the difference? It's certainly not easy. It obviously helps if you can identify the sound and where it's coming from. Here's an easy one to start with. Has this happened to you? The start of Bendix isn't engaging with the engine's flywheel. The Bendix could be sticking, perhaps it's worn, or some teeth are missing from the flywheel's ring gear. The engine's running now. See if you can spot the fault here. That's right, a noisy tappet. Yep. Not an expensive noise and <laughs> easy to put right when you service the car. Now remember, the valve gear turns at half the speed of the crankshaft, so by just listening to the speed of the knock or tap, you can establish which is which. This one is more difficult to spot. Listen very carefully. Notice the deeper tap at the same speed as our noisy tappet? That was a worn cam follower. Now the next noise is twice the speed of the last one. You would be more inclined to hear it when the car is being driven under load. Yeah, that's pretty naked. <laughs> no prizes for spotting that big end. Surprisingly enough, just fitting some new big end shells cured that one. Usually the crankshaft would need regrinding or replacing. Talking about crankshafts, listen to this one. The trouble there was the main bearings, and involved a complete engine overhaul. Again, usually heard under load, but at higher revs. Time for an easy one. I'll bet you know what this is. Sound terrible? Only a slipping fan belt though. It either needs adjusting or replacing. Get that put right, otherwise your battery could go flat, and your radiator could boil. How about that radiator? It needs a healthy water pump to keep the water circulating. Does this sound healthy to you? That noise was heard at the front of the engine. Just moving the fan blade to and fro, with the engine switched off of course, confirmed that the pump's bearing was warm. This particular car in fact had two noises that had to be traced. What do you think the other one is? that one, and unusual. A very noisy distributor. The clattering was heard from the distributor bobwets and disappeared when the engine speeded up. Here is a similar noise, but not so unusual. Yes, the timing chain. It's noisier when the engine is idling and can be heard quite clearly low down at the front. Will be replacing the chain and fitting a new tensioner. It's surprising the number of people who put up with bad performance from their car without realising that the engine is misfiring. Notice the chugging effect on the engine at first, and then how smoothly it runs once the misfire is instantly cured. It sounds like a bag of nails being rattled. Again, you'll hear this when the engine is under load, perhaps driving hard up a hill or in a high gear. That was pinking, or pre-ignition. You'll get this if you use too low a grade petrol or the timing is too far advanced. Now for a noise that is not only annoying, but could be dangerous. Hear that chuffing? Problem with the exhaust blow is that you don't notice it because it appears gradually. Check the exhaust system regularly. 
a lot of noise here, but listen for the drone going wide in the background. Did you say axle one? You're right. The axle was badly worn, but the gearbox contributed as well. You'll hear a noisy differential more when driving top gear with your foot off the accelerator on the overrun. The next sound is coming from the gearbox only. The car is either neutral. Now try and listen for the difference in sound as the clutch is pushed in and out. Did you hear the difference? If depressing the clutch cuts the noise, it points to the gearbox bearings. If the noise is louder when the clutch is depressed, the thrust bearing, the part that actually presses onto the clutch, is worn too. All of these noises you heard were recorded in the PM workshop and have since been cured. Regular readers of Popular Motoring can find out how all these jobs, along with many others, can be tackled and repaired in a way that's easily understood. Everybody should know this sound. Drive safely, won't you? Now, who would have thought that you could get a record that helped you identify certain sounds from car engines, gearboxes, and back axles in? <laughs> I was quite surprised to find that in amongst all the records. Anyway, well, there you go. I think there's a little bit of work to be done on that, but it doesn't sound too bad. It certainly sound a little bit different. So I'll uh, probably keep this in my room now and listen to uh, the occasional record. Got plenty of Elvis, Johnny Cash, all sorts of things. Anyway, thanks for watching. Just had a look at it in the back whilst it was running, and uh, it does in fact have a couple of tubes in there. So a fairly old set. You should probably say 50s or 60s, like I said earlier. I don't really know. Probably a couple of people out there on YouTube. They'll be able to tell me how old it is.